on to the next step. So now we need our diodes. And good, I picked the right one. Okay, so there are 12 diodes, and if you orient the board like he shows in the picture, they're right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. They're all oriented in the same direction across the column and row, <clears throat> and that direction is on the top here, the left, the ones that are facing left to right, the, I don't know if you can see that, but the stripe, which is on this end, um, is going to go toward the left on all of them. And these all have to be bent to fit the holes. So I'm going to try to see how I can do this and make them take up as little space as possible. Let's see if I bend that right against the body. What's that going to look like? Yeah, I think that might actually work. So let's try that. Let's bend it as tight to the body as we can. See if we can stick that through the hole. Yeah, I think that looks really good. Um, let's see, where is it? Right there it is. So, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is I bent the striped end flush with the top of the diode body and then flush with the long side. That makes it fit perfectly in the holes. And then the bent over end, the side coming out of the stripe, is going to go to the left. So, I think what I might do is go ahead and form these first six. This might be a mistake, but get them all in there and solder them all at once. Tell you once you learn CW, you hear it everywhere. I'm hearing the fan. I've got a space heater running. I don't know if you can hear it or not. I hope not. It's pretty quiet, but the motor has a little bit of vibration, and I keep hearing letters CW letters in there, which is kind of funny. Try to hold this guy flush and bend these over. I want them to be nice and tight and straight up and down against the board just so it looks neat.
All right, so there's our next step done. Now we need our inductors. Let's set this aside because I know I need those transistors in a minute. Not that one. Uh, it fell out. Alright, so again with the board oriented this way. So these are just inductors, um, and so they don't have any polarity. So I'm going to try bending these instructions. They bend close to the body. So the first one goes here. The tape on there is keeping it from going through the hole another one of those things I want to orient them all the same way on the board just to have them look nice and make it easier to troubleshoot if you need to read what's on them push that guy down really flush okay I'm actually just going to go ahead and cut these off the tape Get that adhesive on there. Right, I'm just bending these as close to the body as I can. That one was, I think, a little bit too far. So there's one outlier up here. And all the rest of them are in the middle of the two rows of filters. filters.
think those are good. Of course, before I do anything, I will check the. Uh, yeah, I'll check everything on the scope to make sure everything looks good. So, all right. So now we're installing the output transistors, which go over here. I have to move my little foot. And these go with the flat face. So if you look at the transistor, you can see it's got a curved side and a flat side. So the flat side goes down, touching this heat sink. Um, so you want to get these through the holes. And what I like to do is try to get them, get it as far down as I can, and then bend it over until it touches. So I'm holding the transistor flat against the board, and then I'm going to bend the leads back on the back side. That way I know I have the lengths correct. These, I'm assuming this board is going to be like a QCX Mini or a QMX. These are absolutely going to be a bear to solder. They usually are anyway. Now, it would be nice to put the nut, or excuse me, the washer and bolt on there to hold these flat in the right position. However, if you do that, you're just adding more heat to what you have to heat up, or adding more mass to what you have to heat up. It's just going to make it darn near impossible to actually solder, unless you have an actual like soldering gun, not a soldering iron. Then you risk overheating the pads and pulling them off the board and things like that. So, again, as is always the key with soldering, just be patient. put this screw in through the bottom where the four transistors we just soldered are and then we put our washer and then we put our nut so this is to help hold these guys really tight against the board because the actual PCB is the heat sink in this case
to the washer is not the heat sink, but it's holding these really tight against the board, which is, as we know, it's very a very good heat sink because it's incredibly difficult to solder. <laughs> so, all right, there we go. And my cat wants out, so I think we're going to take a break right there and uh, come back in a bit.